Hello, and welcome back to the podcast where you are invited for lighthearted conversations about things that matter as you seek to live your most meaningful, beautiful, and joyful life. I'm your host, Dr. Edie Wadsworth, and I hope you enjoy your stay here at the House of Joy. Hey, everybody, welcome back to House of Joy. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, you guys, my dear friend, Sarah Ray is in the house. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I cannot believe I'm here right now. This is so exciting and I'm just so thankful that you brought me here. I know. I can't wait to dive in. Sarah and I are both lovers of home, lovers of creativity, lovers of creating spaces that we love and Sarah has paid me the best compliment. She has called the house of joy, my house of joy, a country castle. (laughs) <laughs> and boy, is it a country castle. It is so beautiful. I was like, wow, I need to copy and paste every single thing in here. It is so good. Well, that's the way I feel when I go to your house. Oh, you're so sweet. I was just at your house the other day, and it's oh. always so cute. Everything, all the details. It's Thank so fun. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to let you basically give us a basic introduction to yourself, and then we're going to dive into all kinds of things, you guys. You are in for such a treat. We're going to be talking about um, Sarah's story of how she became a a content creator on Instagram, which is how I found you. And even though you live in my town, (laughs) I knew you on Instagram before I actually knew you. And um, she loves talking about, you know, really figuring out our worth and exploring the ways that we're all created, that we're all created to be creative. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about all those things. We're going to talk about you being a content creator. I'm a content creator too. So we'll kind of talk about what that looks like for both of us. And I just can't wait to dive into your story. So tell us a little bit about Sarah Ray. So my name is Sarah Ray and I live in East Tennessee and I share home decor fashion and also my life my family and just like everywhere I've been um, it is so much fun I have a true passion for decorating and also painting so I do like an array of different things but I love it so much and I just kind of combine it all together and share it with the world well it's funny that you say that I totally forgot in my um downstairs in the just right there if you were watching on YouTube it's it's a downstairs bedroom that we converted into like a bunk room so it has like two queen sets of bunk beds and it's so beautiful it's so cute yes, in there I and love it I have one of your paintings in there oh my gosh. your angel painting which I love so much and I, I bought from you last year we were both doing an event with Heskett chiropractic like a women's yes, night yeah. and as soon as I saw it I'm like oh my gosh that's that is made for my bunk room and so. it's so perfect at least I was like oh my gosh it looks so good yeah like the I room is all painted it. really dark and of course your painting is beautiful and light colors and it's just so pretty in there. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. It looks so good. And like, I love to like play around with different colors. So I think that art really, and you can see it in your home, like everywhere around, it just really makes everything pop. Yes. The art is everything. It, it just really gives it like that is. sweet touch to the rest of the house. And kind of personalizes it and customizes it. Yeah, yes. so we're going to dive into a lot of that. Share with us though, because I know I've been following you for so many years. I don't know how many years you've been online, but I've been following you for years. So tell us kind of how you got into that and and maybe a little bit of the evolution of your um, Instagram, you know, online presence. Yeah, so I've been doing it for forever. I started whenever Instagram basically started. I just downloaded the app and I was like trying to figure it out. And at first I thought you would just like show your food, but I just started sharing pictures of my home and like decorating little tiny things. And as it grew, I was like, wow, I think I'm like semi onto something. And then the bigger it got, um, I think I got to like around 14 or no, about 19,000 followers at that point where I had built it all organically to sharing like my home and my daughter and my husband at the time. And uh, we ended up getting a divorce and I was in Nashville. I was like, okay, I'd worked with all these country musicians doing art and sharing my decor. And when I went back home to start all over, I was actually going to delete everything. Like I had thought like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Like my heart was broken. I was literally having to start over. And uh, I was praying so hard, holding on to my little girl. And she was one, almost two at the time of the divorce. And I was like, what am I going to do? And honestly, 
it was totally a God thing. Like it was such a miracle because I was like ready to delete it. And that next day, Crate and Barrel wrote me and they said they wanted to work with me. And I was so shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, you want to work with me? And then after that, I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Like I need to keep going. And so as I was going through all the hardest times in my life, I was able to still show like a creative spirit, like things that I could do to like share with the world because I never wanted to be in that like negative. I mean, I explained the pain that I was going through but also like the decor and following your dreams I tried to inspire people along the way the whole time and I just it started going with like I did jobs with country living and I did a tv show and so many opportunities that you would never even imagine just by not quitting that's what I tell people I'm like it you know you can be on the brink of literally despair crush you know like where everything's on fire like you literally have nothing left and if you just keep going on that edge like you you cannot imagine all the incredible things on the other side so it's been such it's just been such a huge blessing uh social media and it's just evolved over time and um so like there was that time where I just shared more of my daughter and decorating and then it got into more of like when I met Orville and then adding on to our family and then sharing more decorating so it's just been such a blessing and um I just can't believe all the things I've been able to do. Yeah, that, the opportunities. And as you know, yeah. you know, all the people you can reach, it's just so incredible. Yeah, Sarah, by the way, you guys, I don't know how many followers you have, 9 million? No, <laughs> 300,000 no, or no. something. Yeah, like so many. <laughs> like you have such such a huge account and such an impact. I just Thank love you. when I see inspiring women like you like using their gifts, making their impact in the world. It's so inspiring. And I, I knew all of that when I was just following you as like, Oh my gosh, I love Sarah Ray. Can't wait to meet her someday. And then when our, our mutual friend Tanner kind of introduced us and we went to coffee and got to be friends. What I realized is that what people see online of you does not hold a candle to how precious you are in person. Oh my gosh. Thank you. You're going to make me cry. You are literally so I'm gonna cry too you're Ugh. such a thoughtful loving generous caring person and Thank I just you. think we're so lucky to know you and have you um offering your gifts and sharing your heart oh that means, online that means so much to me. when I met you I was just like wow and it and like I say, you know, Edie's incredible, but it literally speaks such volume. When I met Edie, I was like, wow, you were like a lost sister that I never had, that knew I, that I had. When I met you, I was like, oh my gosh, like Edie is so gifted in the terms of where you pour your heart into everyone you meet. And so when we just connected, I was like, you are literally an angel. Like I just connected to you and thought wow I just cannot believe all the people you reach to so you saying that means so much to me well and it's definitely I mean I definitely felt that same like kindred spirit you're yes. the type of person that I feel like as soon as as soon as you're so warm so as soon as you get to know somebody like Sarah you feel like oh we're best friends or we've been best friends forever like <laughs> yeah. you have that kind of instant rapport with people you have such a gift for that but I've just watched you over the years and just watched how you love on people and interact and how you are with your family it really is inspiring so Thank I'm you. very thankful for you I also am kind of curious because I know my own journey online I've been online since 2008 I don't know. Like I'm like the grandma of yeah. blogging. Like I had oh, a blog too, back when we were in on blogspot.com. <laughs> yeah. That's how I did too. You did? I was like blogging like Will Harper was born in 2012. Oh, I've started I've been doing it since like I want to say 2010 or, okay. or 2011. Okay. So a long time. Oh yeah. I was I didn't blogging you had too. Been that long too. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I had the blog spot and we had to go to Squarespace and then they said, "Hey, now you need to go to WordPress and yep. I was just learning all the things yep. and also praying really hard that yes. I could make the transfer every time. <laughs> I know. I'm a little bit tech challenged myself. So um, now I'm so thankful that I have people to help me with that side of it just so I can do the parts that I'm actually yes. good at. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we became real life friends and our kids became friends. We both have six graders. I know. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. We're all like emotional. We're like holding hands like, oh, we got to get through this. We got to get so through emotional. this together. Oh. I know. It's so funny. I was driving Tom to um, school this morning and he was obsessed with like what truck he's going to buy. And he wants like a 2013 F two fifty and I'm and he kept going show me yeah. pictures you like this oh. one then show me another picture you like this one I don't know if I like the two thousand thirteen or two thousand twelve I'm like Tom 
you're 11. We're not buying a truck. <laughs> they get so stuck on it, though. They get stuck on one thing, uh-huh. and they're like, they will keep going. And it's going to be like years and years until you can be like, well, uh-huh. maybe someday. Okay. Yeah, maybe we need a job, and then maybe we can buy a truck. And when you say maybe, he's like, there's a chance. There, yeah, he'll keep so. talking about this truck that we're going to buy. But anyways, so they're in the same grade at the same school, so that's been fun. I get to yes. see you now at drop, drop oh off gosh. and pick up and all of that. So that's been so fun. But I'm curious, tell me about the things that you help people with um, and kind of like what your mission is with your impact that you're having. So I, my mission really is to have people be able to see their true potential. That's my biggest thing. And, and my hope and prayer is that when people see me, not even just sharing like an outfit or a product I love or anything else, but that they have so much good and so much greatness inside of them that it inspires them to follow their dreams. Because uh, even when I share outfits, it's more than that. Like I want to make them laugh. I want them to find some fun in that. And then also just like sharing my story and hoping that they will see all that they have Uh, because there's been times in my life that I've almost given up so many times and I feel like you know that's the time you have to push the most that's the time that you have to keep going and a lot of people come up to me and they say like I'm not creative like you or I can't do this but think about all the stuff that you can do it's remarkable like everyone has their own gifts and just finding those gifts again and what they're able to do um, really it's unreal like it speaks volumes about once you start changing making that change in your life and really seeing your potential and following your dreams to see I think people get stuck so much in what you teach you know, like people get stuck so much in trying to find themselves that they kind of just give up they keep going in the spiral and it's like getting them out of that circle where they're stuck um, and finding their true gifts and a lot of times these are gifts that you've had as a child yes. that you just kind of like buried away yes. and then didn't go back to it right so like say you wanted to be an artist when you were little a lot of times deep down like that's kind of your calling like your calling is to create and paint and you shouldn't be ashamed of it and you should definitely get grow that confidence and follow your dream yeah it's funny when you say that I I love thinking about that for myself and teaching the people in my program that same concept is that you will see, I think Jamie Nato is the first person I ever heard say, like you'll see breadcrumbs of your calling in your past. And when I think about my own past, I was always keeping journals. So when I was young, like in grade school, I would always have little journals. And I remember being in middle school and making like journals and putting little stickers in there and drawing things and doodling and writing. And then (laughs) then I got into my poetry phase. When I was in early high school, <laughs> I remember when my book came out, my ninth grade teacher uh, sent me a message and said, I have a beautiful piece of poetry that you wrote me when you were in high school. Would you like me to send it, you know, oh like gosh. take a picture of it, like to share it on the internet? I'm like, please, no, <laughs> don't do it. It was really bad. I'm not a poet, <laughs> but, and I was really into scrapbooking. And it's funny because when I started writing and blogging and sharing photographs and Instagramming and creating content, I'm like, oh, like I can see breadcrumbs of that yes. from when I was little, like always mm-hmm. processing through writing and then having an eye for photography and design wow. and like all of that was there back then. And, you know, I have always, and I don't know about you, but I know I have always felt like I had a little bit of or maybe a lot of, a very atypical brain, maybe, yeah. you know, ADHD, never really formally diagnosed. Oh, girl, I got it. Yeah. But I remember yeah. being younger and going, okay, my brain doesn't work like normal people's, and that's probably a problem. And yeah. I would kind of really struggle with that internally. And then I realized, like, oh, no, like these things that make me different from everybody else are kind of my superpowers. Oh, 100%. And don't you feel like I'm so thankful that – I kind of really fell into the online world where I could, there was a way for me to use my gifts in such a dynamic way. Absolutely. I feel like because of the way that you have, you know, you know how to speak, you know how to speak to people and inspire them, your creativity part. And the thing is like literally honing in on those gifts and being able to share 
uh, is everything. One of the stories that you tell that resonates with me so much is where you said that you were in school as a, to be a doctor and you yeah. had all these highlighters and things you pulled out and you're like, I'm not like everyone here. And that's so true because yes. I've been in situations where I'm like in a certain office job, like even when I was trying to make extra money, trying to pursue my content creating and everything else. Yeah. There was a time I worked the utilities for five years and I was just like, and I love the people there, but I was like, I could tell that I was just different, different. from yeah. them. And I didn't, I felt like your you brain know, works. I different. decorated you my think cubicle. Yeah. Yes. I had like, I had like flower pictures pictures they were inspirational quotes like people were like wow what is going on here this dynamic but yes. I, I just needed to be in a creative space and so I was like well you know this isn't a creative environment so I'm gonna like make yeah. it creative looking and um, I do think that when you're in that moment in life like you just see people say like hey you're built different but yeah that's a good thing you know you want to be built different you yeah. want to really hone in on your gifts and what you have to offer and then and share it with the world because I feel like everyone has such a voice. Like I think it downplays when people say like, Oh, well, everyone has a voice, you know, but I really mean that everyone has their own story yep. and they are meant to do something or meant to do a lot of different things and wear different hats and to not be so afraid. I think we get so used to being distracted by, you know, social media or our phones and we yep. forget that day like, hey, we were supposed to do something to pursue our dreams or we were supposed to take that step. And, um, you know, because social media can be such a gift, but then also it can be such a distraction. Yeah. So I do think finding that balance and really what you're meant for yep. is so important. How do you think like you've mentioned a couple of times about just not quitting. And I can tell you that my journey in what I'm doing uh, over the last 15 years or more has been fraught with doubt and failure and dealing with being online where yeah. sometimes it feels like too much and I don't, you know, I want I don't want to pull away from it. But I think there's something so powerful about taking seasons to rest or taking season to refigure out like what you want it to look like. But when you know that you have found something that you're called to do, just not quitting. So talk more about what that's looked like for you. So for me, I feel like, um, with my, the way that my Instagram and everything else works, and especially like with jobs, you have to do certain things to get more posts. You have to have high engagement. You are, you're, you're basically out there where you're like competing with all these other people. And I finally got to a point in my life where I was like, okay, I need to hone in on myself and be true to myself. And, uh, cause I felt like, Oh, if I'm like this person, yes. then maybe my account will do better. Or if I'm like this girl, like I really love her stuff. Maybe I should share stuff like that. And it just wasn't working for me. And I started to feel like, you know, I want to quit doing this because it, it, it has evolved so much where there's so many influencers or bloggers yep. that, you know, you're kind of competing with them. And I had to realize, like, take a stopping point and realize, like, what is so important with this Instagram? It's not about me. It's about them and helping them. And I think I got yes. lost in that and I was wanting to quit. And I feel like just listening to who you are really touching like really thinking who you're touching what you're what you're wanting to do in life because you can get so distracted like I said like just distracted from everything else and uh, there's plenty of times that I felt like quitting and I feel like that's when my breakthrough was really coming and you yes know, and, and doing your that's doing LMS so oh my gosh when I started doing LMS I was kind of you know like scared because it was something so new but wow, it was so powerful and it taught me so much about living in abundance because I got lost so much in my life and you know, like how I wanted to quit. And I think the thing with LMS, it really helped me see that I am so blessed because I do think there are times when you're like competing with all these people you take for granted all that you have like yeah. yes some days someone's going to be so much bigger than you like I have people that started with me and they have millions of followers and I'm so proud of them and then other people that you know like may still have 20 or 30 but I feel like as long as you can stay true to you yes. and really see your true potential it is everything and learning from changing your thinking to you know like having that positive thought cycle and all the abundance that we have I mean wow it is incredible just to change your perspective yeah because you can live in all this like competition or wanting to be like someone else but when you really think like how much you have and how we have this voice we have this platform to speak it really is so powerful yeah it's funny because I do feel like probably in the world we're in in that sort of online world maybe more than anywhere else I remember when I first started and I found 
like my first people that I found online and looked up yes. to. And I remember thinking, oh, I want to be just like the Nestor, Mike Willen. And I would go right. through a phase where, okay, I think I would, maybe I want to be a home blogger. And then I found Melanie Schenkel and she was so funny. And I'm like, oh, it's just funny just to share funny family <laughs> stories. Yeah. And then I'd find somebody else and I'd be like, oh, I just want to be, maybe I'll just be a writer. And I think what I finally realized is, I mean, like I took it so far. I remember when the sort of neutral trend maybe you started the yeah. neutral trend Sarah. no I feel like I I feel like I saw from someone else and I was like oh I gotta do all this neutral but then I'm like honey I need to get some color back in my well, life like, I remember real. literally trying to either paint everything or spray paint everything or buy everything neutral and then it didn't last very long because yeah. I'm such a color person and I remember like going oh this to stay true to me it's always probably going to be very collected, very bohemian, very, you know, colorful. Yes. And it's funny because in this house, before we moved here, I went through kind of a neutral phase. And when I moved to this house, I'm like, I am just letting my true self, like how I really like things quirky, where things don't match. I love and, it. you know, and just letting that come out so that I can be who I truly am. But I do think that you know, it takes a while to get there. So just an encouragement to those of you who are starting something new or who, who are trying to follow your dreams, that it's okay mm -hmm. to take inspiration from all the people we love. Like when I come to oh, your 100%. house, I'm like, I need that white sofa and I need that cute throw. And I need, you know, and taking that inspiration is great, but also like you say, being true to yourself. And I think when you are that way, it's easier to not quit. It's easier to stay your course and do the thing that you can do, offer the gifts that you can can give right and for me you know that was really not just one of those things but a little bit of a collection of all of that so now I have a membership where I kind of can help people in all the categories instead of like choosing one thing well I'm just going to be a writer or I'm just going to be a speaker or I'm just going to help people with relationships I knew that you know I'm just have a lot of interest and so the life mentoring school that I created was basically creating something that I would want to be in that I felt like was a reflection of my truest gifts. And I feel like you do that so well. I love following you. I love, listen, Thank every you time so much. yesterday you were trying on some clothes, I'm like, I need that <laughs> outfit and that outfit. I love, and I love the way you do it and you make it fun. And oh, like you say, you. like we just did, Emmy and I just did an episode on style and I do think that it's more, it is more than that. It's how it's it can be an expression of who you are. You can make it fun. You can make it, uh, you know, a way that you kind of um, become the person that you want to start becoming. And you can yes. do all that through something like style or the way you decorate your house. I remember there's this great quote, which I don't remember the whole quote, but it was basically something like, art is not just a painting on the wall. It's the way you dress, the way you make your grocery list, the way you decorate your house, the way you love your children love can all be like an expression of your creativity and I think I love the way you do that I love the way you live that out oh, in your everyday you so life much. I remember when we came to your house last year for Halloween and just every detail <laughs> the little plates the way you had decorated the food you had I'm like oh this like speaks to my oh, heart well I love entertaining and you know I it made me think of something where I I used to harp on it so much like I was like hey Every day should be celebrated. And I still really believe that. And I had someone, you know, that wrote me like, cause you're going to get negative. And even in life, like you're going to have negative things happen to you. Like you have to choose how you want to react to that. And I get bad messages sometimes with people like, well, it's yeah. just sixth grade. Like what's, the big, what's the big deal? Or why are you crying over that? Or, you know, like, I don't really, I feel like this is too much for whatever party you're doing. But honestly, if you want to pour your time into like celebrating, even just the, yes. the, even just the smallest of days, like with my kids, I feel like it's so important making the holidays big for them. And you don't have to have a lot of money to do that. You can literally do it with like paper mache and paint. And yeah. that's the thing I like to share too, like DIY decorating doesn't have to be so expensive. Like you don't think like, you don't have to look at people and say, I have to have this bag to be happy. I have to have this extremely expensive couch to be happy. You really don't. It starts within and then yeah. it gravitates, you know, around you. You'll start making your own 
um, space in life and figuring out what you love. Cause like you said, you don't have to have, you know, certain things that all these no. people have, like the world needs you for who you are yep. and what you have to share and, you know, celebrations, like celebrating every day, trying to find the good in every day is like what I've learned so much from you too, is just like mm. celebrating yes. all that. It just means so much. Yeah. And I think when you're creating a life, a home, you know, a space for your family and we all do it in different ways and I've done it in different ways in different seasons. Mm -hmm. I can remember some seasons where I threw Halloween parties like yours yeah. and I'm not currently in a season like that, but when I see it, it just warms my heart and it oh. makes me feel so loved and I know how it makes your kids feel so loved and I feel like doing it like for that reason and creating that atmosphere where they just feel celebrated and loved. Like it's such an act of service. And I think it's such a, a generosity yeah. toward the people, you know, that you love. And I, not that it's necessarily a lost art, but even the comments that you get about it tells me that we're not very good. I think sometimes as a society really creating extraordinary moments just in everyday life yes. and I do love doing that I remember <laughs> the last few days as I've been dropping Tom off and you know raising an 11 year old Tom Sawyer has been you know has been a challenge at times yeah. but he is such a fun kid and I was telling him on the way to school like you are so loved Tom you are such a leader like the kids look up to you and I want you to when you show up to school you show up as so I was giving him this Absolutely. like pep talk before no school. I love that That's and what he's I'm like. like mom I'm not even listening. Just I'm like, I know that you pretend like you're not listening, but you're going to think about this later in the day. And you're mm -hmm. going to think about like, oh, you know, I'm a leader and they're looking up to me and I want to show up as my best self. And I want to whatever. I said, you won't be able to get it out of your mind. You'll just be thinking about it all day. And he's he's laughing. He goes, no, I won't. I'm going to forget about it as soon as I get out of the car. <laughs> but even like like I think about that, even creating moments that are um, meaningful and yes. fun and kind of purposeful and inspiring just in little moments on the drive to school. And there's so many times when I don't do that, when yeah. I feel crabby in the morning and we drive and it's quiet and whatever, but. And that's when, okay too. And that's okay yeah. too. But the more that, that I remember to do that for myself and for the people in my life, the more I enjoy my own life. And we just had, you know, spent a weekend and had our grandbabies here and just making that special mm -hmm. and enjoying every moment of it. And I just see you doing that with your family oh, and with your thank kids. You. Thank you. And it, it really, it really touches me. I'm so well, thank thankful. Thank you so much. For, and, for you. You know, I think about our journey too and how we got, how Orville and I got together and how we were able to have kids uh, together and they're so amazing and wild just like Tom they're so cute they're, they're all oh so my wild. gosh but you know finding those times where you can really make that meaningful impact in their life and I really do think those little tiny little glimpses of like love yes. makes a huge impact in their whole life you know especially teaching them to be proud of themselves and getting that yeah. confidence and I yeah. do find that you know where you talked about before even in coaching because I was I'm so fortunate to be able to take your coaching program and it oh, is. I know Sarah just changed. got certified Woo! you guys as a life so coach. Excited. I'm so excited. You have no idea. Oh. And the fact that I'm going to start, you know, coaching in December, I'm just so excited. I've been thinking about all the things, but even getting to this point and just like practicing and meeting friends and like working through things with them, I can firmly uh, I, could, I mean, I literally has changed so much for me. The fact that you can change people's lives, but also helping them, helping them see their true value. And when you help someone else, I can I firmly agree that where you said, um, when you help others, then it helps you too. Yeah. Because I was trying to get out like you, it helps yes. others too. Yeah. And it really does. Like it helps you when you help them and you're not even trying to help yourself. You're trying to help them, but yeah. it helps pour into you as well. And it yes. is so profound. That's why I knew, like I knew there was something more to what I was doing and influencing in like coaching aspect and helping others is incredible. And you I have mean, such really a, is. I mean, there are people that I think are naturally born at this and when I watch the way you are in the world even the way you are with me every time I'm with oh, you thank you you're encouraging me you're going oh my gosh I noticed how you did this and you should try this and you're so good at this like you are such a natural cheerleader encourager oh, which I think you. is a huge part of what it means to be a coach is really seeing people at their best and highest and encouraging them to get there yeah. which is what I love so much about it but you have so much thank of you. that naturally that I know so many people are going to be blessed by 
that. Well, thank you so much. That's such my passion too, is just encouraging people, you know, to see their value and to inspire them. And uh, that's my hopes is to be able to like really help people. And the more I learned about all the things about myself and how to help others, it has been such a game changer yes. in my life. And even, even Orville, my husband said like, he's like, I mean, you've always been a good wife and everything, but he's like, this is like a whole other you. Like it's incredible Aww. because I feel like I've really found myself in it as well. And yeah. kind of things that I was battling with before realizing that it was, it was meant to happen as it has. And just, yes. you know, embracing all the things, embracing the change and knowing that, you know, we, we can be through going through struggles right now. We can all have our different struggles, but still find happiness and see that abundance. Yeah. And uh, it really is everything. Yeah. I was talking about that today that I think so often we set ourselves up where we feel like, well, until I get this, until I have this mm -hmm. house, until I have this job, until I have this amount of money, until I have these friends, until I have this spouse, until, 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 until that's when I'll really enjoy life and it'll be abundant and I'll have a joyful heart and like we put so many conditions on it instead of really embracing the power that we all have to create that for ourselves right now no right. I can just I can live that kind of meaningful joyful abundant purposeful life right now and no matter what's going on and you've proven that like in really hard circumstances where you've created something out of nothing where you've yes. been willing to not quit where you keep showing up and I know, you know, a lot of times, especially in the online world, it can be tough because, again, there are people that are critical. There are mm -hmm. people that don't agree with no matter what you're doing. There are some people who think you shouldn't be doing it or you're doing it wrong. And it's funny because my whole life I have known I, ha I have had this sort of sneaky feeling like you're just too much. You're too you're too excitable. No, you, no, no, I'm like that, too. And I'm you're like, just mm, like that. Like yeah. you're, we get so excited about things yeah. and you know like you should have seen sarah and i ran you invited us i think to a 5k i'm like yeah nobody has seen a group of people show up to a 5k like we show up to a 5k because we are extra so we are extra we are bougie bouge is what i me and tanner and you together i feel like as a matter of fact i had on these yellow earrings i do believe and at the race wrote me. they were all like first of all you ran with those and I was blown <laughs> away. I was like, bro, she came in here and she was ready to go. Had I think you had like a pink. I had a pink puffer. Oh my gosh. She looks so I had a pink cute. puffer. Okay. She looked like it was like one of those Pinterest outfits. I wanted to, you know, we used to be able to swipe up. I say that, but you want to tap the link and get it. It was so cute. And you were, you were ready to go. And I think I had like pink on you like were, FP movement. You or were something. too much too, Sarah. We're too much and together. I think, and I downplayed a lot on social. Cause I really am like such a high, Hyper person I want to hype people up I want to get hyped Me up too. and we were running and it was it was definitely like we look like we didn't belong there we had our own party <laughs> where we were what in this group of runners does not belong okay yeah. we see it and we were just we were listening to our own music I remember we had some music playing on our phone the kids were crying we're pushing it anyways we're like we're gonna do this we're gonna get through this like it's we're gonna be great it was so awesome it's funny we got tickets to see Morgan Wallen at oh the end gosh. of September and surprised Sarah with them. I'm, I'm still the first, in shock. The first thing Sarah said was, should we wear white cowboy boots? Do you want to wear your white cowboy boots? <laughs> like we were planning our outfits from literally minute one. That's the thing though. Of having our tickets. That's how I'm like, you're like this long lost sister because, <laughs> and her style is so like my style. I'm like, okay, listen, we're going to have to plan this it out and get our outfits going. We're going to get our outfits going. Oh, it's going to be so good. I remember when we did the coaching, like, when we had you had the whole weekend it was incredible by the way the whole the event, live event oh my gosh it, it was so fun love is magic was incredible and whenever we were dancing and you you looked over at me and you're laughing you're like how do you know every song and I'm like honey I have a song playing in my head 24 7 I listen to so much music and I was like oh my gosh you have no idea I know every song and so when you were ready to like start dancing I was like oh the party's about to get started because we are going to turn it up uh, we yeah and you did and listen I don't know if you met the lady that is in my program from Brazil. She's so adorable. And she I came out to me and she goes, I don't say this to very many people, but you party like a Brazilian. And oh, I'm like, that's awesome. Well, everyone so at first fun. was so scared. You could tell like some of the 
some of the women were like scared. They're like, should I get there out there on the dance floor or not? I'm like, get out here. Let's go, here. girl. Come on, let's go. And they were having so much fun. Wasn't it the photographer or someone that said, oh my gosh, they're having so much fun. You would think that they were all drinking, but none and of no, us there was no alcohol at the whole event. <laughs> because and we so were true. having so much fun. It was so much fun. I didn't want the night to end. I was like, wow, everybody was smiling. And it was like, we were in the moment. And it was just like, you know, like moments like that is what I'm saying. Like you create those moments. And the fact that you've created such an incredible amount of people that just like the masses that just come and love on you and love what you say. And I'm like, it's, it is incredible. I know that it's taken so much time and I'm sure there's been so many times that you've wanted to quit and, Mm. you know, just think about all the people that you've touched by not quitting. That's what I'm getting at. Like you have so much joy and so much love for everyone. And it's, it's like the thing that I think is true too, Sarah, is that that truly, I think it's possible for everyone. And some people, sometimes people will say to me like, well, you just wear rose colored glasses and you're out of touch with reality and you're like Pollyanna. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say to them is like, that comes from a really difficult childhood, a lot of really difficult early adult you know, experiences. And I know a lot of yours comes from a lot of hard places. Oh yeah. And so when I know that somebody is going through something tough, I'm like, no, when you get through this, your ability to create and experience joy in your life is going to be so much more magnified because you know what it's like to not be there and to not feel that. And I do think that sometimes people who've been through the hardest things have the capacity then on the other side of that to experience so much fulfillment and so much meaning and so much joy Absolutely. because I think sometimes the lower the lows that you're ha- that you have to go through or that you're willing to go through then I-, I think the deeper the experience you can have maybe the higher the highs but I do think that for me I did learn early on like this is not a given it's not a given that you're going to experience life the way you want. It's not a given that you're going to have joy and abundance and love and generosity and gratitude. If you want to live a life like that, you have to intentionally create that because life is hard and there's going to be so many things that come against you doing that. And I know, you know, when I've heard you share parts of your story, I know you've been through a lot of hard things. And I think that that is sometimes what makes the sweetest just the sweetest experience of life. Yeah. And even the time, so even when I got a divorce, like honestly, I thought that everything was fine. Like we had our ups and downs, but I literally thought everything was fine. And it was such a shock to me, like a shock to the core because on my side, you know, I thought we were great and to get all that taken away and to literally be left with nothing, like maybe $200 in my checking account, if even at, you know, being able to move or to move out of town to start over it is really a shock to the gut too because you're like you know you know you created such a life and you think like oh wow everything is so perfect and I have the perfect life and everything is so great but really to be able to go through that pain and then to start over and see that you can create this still you can create this magic even with your daughter even through all this pain because through such deep pain because we're all going to go through pain in our life we cannot prevent that I think a lot of people think that they can like you know just play it safe and not try anything new and nothing bad is going to happen but like bad is going to happen regardless Regardless. of how you take it and how you create that happiness. Uh, because I realized like, Oh my gosh, like, yeah, I don't have a lot, but what do I have? I mean, and I have so much, you know, like I might not have the money at that time, but think of everything else. And if I just keep working towards my dream and following that and showing my daughter too, I think that was such the biggest thing is showing her that she can do all this. So when that lady wrote me about, you know, having, Oh wow, she's, it's just sixth grade. I'm like, it's more than that. Honestly, it is me being that single mom holding on to dear life with my daughter, not knowing if we're ever going to make it. Like not only am I making it, but she's making it too. And then my and other thriving. children too. Oh, yes. thank you. But you know what I mean? Like they're, we're all just on this journey together and creating that happiness. You have to create it every day. Like you don't just think like, oh, I'm having a horrible day and everything is awful. But you have to switch it up and see the good and think like how many people you're reaching that day, how many people you're touching and um and sharing your gifts you know with the world it's just all of us can do it you don't have to have a huge platform to share your voice you know the people around you are everything and they watch you and they need you and they need you to find your joy the biggest thing is seeing that your kids 
learning all these studies that they actually thrive on your happiness. Yeah. That it's, you know, they don't care about like the biggest car or the nicest boat or whatever. They literally thrive seeing you happy, seeing yep. the mother happy, which I thought was so incredible and powerful yes. that you finding your purpose and you being just generally happy in life will help them just thrive so much. Yeah. And it's something, you know, I mean, obviously the name of this podcast is House of Joy and I've explored that word a lot and it's different than like a superficial what some people might think of as a superficial happy like the way I think about it and from what I've read really what the word means is like this deep down satisfaction this deep down belief mm -hmm. that all is well that God loves us that he's for us yeah that everything somehow will work out for our good that we can trust him and I think sometimes what I've learned too is like going through harder things I think has increased my capacity to experience negative emotion, which makes it easy for me to take chances, which makes it easy for me. Well, let's start a business. Let's, right. you know, launch a new offer. Let's, you know, put our work in the world. Let's have a live event because I can trust my capacity to sometimes there'll be disappointment there. Sometimes it won't work. Sometimes it will fail. Yeah. And don't you think like in your own life, the chances that you take and putting yourself out there you kind of learned, I think, sometimes the courage to do that by going through hard things. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and it's crazy when you think about, it, you know, you all the stuff that you go through and then changing that perspective, like you said, like it really does break all those boundaries, you know, like because we put up these walls. Yeah. And I think once those walls are broken and you yeah. don't have a choice to, I think that was like my thing in that moment where I didn't have I was in true despair, like agony, like heartbreaking agony. And just to keep going, yeah. uh, it does make it so much easier to be able to take those chances. And maybe for some people, maybe they haven't had something like truly um, horrible happen to them, but also they, maybe they can just see if they just take that one leap of courage, like what doors it'll open. You know, mm -hmm. if they make that call or send that email uh, and just see what, could change for them you yes, know but no that. one's life is perfect and on social media I think we look at people we think like oh my gosh they have it all they've got the house and they've got the kids and they've got but they are in struggles too and yes I think that's the thing is with social is such a good thing but also it can make some people think you know like comparing and uh, you can get lost in comparing with other people and seeing yep. what they have, but we all have struggles. Yes. And that's what makes us human. Yes. You know, we can't, you can't fight from having struggles. We're all going to have them. I think a lot of people I've uh, read into that say like, oh, well you just, it looks so perfect and everything's so great, but you know, we still have struggles. Yes. And finding that happiness and being able to, you know, listen to songs that make you so happy and finding ways to do things every day. Like you have your routine and I love it so much because I know one of your parts is, is working out every day. Yeah. And that has inspired me so much. And I'm like, wow, in your teachings, I've found that too, that working out has helped me so much. It is such a game changer yes. to be able to exercise and move your body. And what a gift when you break it down that I get this chance to work to out. To do this. Yeah. Yes. That I'm able to get up in the morning and work out. I'm able to do this. And granted, it does, like you think about it, you're like, oh, I don't want to get up and I don't want to do this. But once you do it, you feel so much better. Yep. So it's like taking that step each day towards your goals, taking that step towards your dream. Um, oh, and just, that, yeah, Sarah. just seeing all the good around you because there is so much good. Yep. There really is. Yes. Um, well, I have just loved chatting with you about all these things, Sarah. When we usually do the podcast, Emmy and I always kind of, when we get towards the end, we think about like some things we're loving um, a couple things. We, sometimes we do three things. Sometimes we all pick the same yeah. things, but, um, as we close out today, by the way, I just want to say thank you. I love you so much. Thank you. We'll so put much. your links in the show notes so that everybody can come follow you. They all need to come buy some art because you have the most <sighs> gorgeous you. paintings. Um, but are you, can you think of anything that you're just loving right now? Now I want you to think about, cause you're such a home person, home yeah. blogger, home Instagrammer. So maybe, is there anything for your home that you're loving right now or a trend that you're loving right now? Anything you could yeah, share? Yeah, so aside from the holidays, because I'm obsessed with um, decorating for holidays right now, I am really into like the velvet. And I noticed this is like a velvet situation here that I'm loving so much. Mm -hmm. So like the velvet pillows, I'm obsessing okay. with those. And any, any specific place to get them? That uh, you're well, you know, I love some anthro. I love some anthro too. <laughs> um, yeah, 
so I've been checking out all theirs. They actually have, which this is not related, but they have a flamingo toilet paper roll thing that stands up really tall. It's gold. Oh, stop it. it. Is, it, is it, it so cute? It is so cute. I was like, Orville's like, do we need that? I'm like, yes. Do we, we need do. a flamingo toilet paper roll holder? Yes. Of course we yes, do. Yes, we do. So <laughs> I'm going to have to add a card on that. And then the velvet pillows. It also like this Sherpa flowy, um, the Sherpa blankets. I'm really okay. into that and the fur. But my biggest thing in terms of style right now, like what we're wearing, I'm like okay. obsessed with cowboy boots. Okay. <gasps> And You're I'm speaking loving them. my love language. Oh, there's so many good ones. I saw this brand. I'll have to send it to you later. Um, they have, because I can't think of it at the moment, but they have okay. like big giant like bows that are leather that are on top of the boot. They're Stop like, it. they're decorating it like a Christmas tree. It's so fancy and so much fun. Why have I not seen this? See, this is how I know you're like 10, 15 years younger than me. You no. always have the cutest stuff. Well, cowboy I'm, boots with boot with bows. I know. I feel like I live on Pinterest. That's my happy place too, by the way, which it inspires me so much but I feel like the algorithm is just treating me so well there so I'm like I need enjoying, your algorithm you know like I'm enjoying all the bows and candles and you know I'm, I'm obsessed with like gold candle holders and all oh. that and don't even get me sorry about fall because we I will, oh, I will have you here way dying. too long I mean I am so sad summer is almost over because we do love our lake life but I cannot wait to get all my little tea lights and uh, all my little flicker candles yes. out to like I'm so excited about fall too and like maroon the maroon flowers you know like they're like stems that are so cute that people add for their fall like that's really in and okay. then all those deep hues of color which obviously I love. we are in the country castle <laughs> and we have all of it here so. all the colors yes and so like you're absolutely 100% on brands you better be showing all your spaces and yeah so I'm but I'm definitely a obsessed with that and layering jewelry like that's where it's at right now which your set is so fabulous I tell her every time I see her first of all Edie has a ray of jewelry but here lately what you've been wearing yeah, is this so incredible you also necklaces. put me on Parker and Thatch is yes. that yes and it is unreal I'm like this whole website I Their want everything on there it's so cute the big gold hearts so that's why I was like are you gonna wear the gold heart <laughs> the gold to heart. Morgan Wallen yes it's gonna be so cute <gasps> yes yes do I, I may need to get some new cowboy boots, though, because I've, oh, I mean, I I've got like my favorite pink suede boots that are from, where are they from? That mm. shop in Nashville downtown. Mm. I'll think of it. Dolce Vita? No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Let me think of it. Um, and then my white cowboy boots, I think those were free people, so I may wear those, but I need to find the link to these bow ones. <laughs> yeah, it was unreal. Like, this girl makes them. I don't even know how it's possible. And so it's like edged bows on there, but they're leather. Okay. And she has flowers and all different designs. And I was like, where have these been all my life? Wow. Which they, it is... It is a little pricey, but yeah. it's like a work of art on your feet. Okay. So who wouldn't want to wear wait. that, right? Like, um, Okay, so we've got our home item. We have our, our clothing item. I know that you're so into the facial stuff, the makeup. Is there anything yes. lately that you're loving? So I love a good highlighter and uh, any type like of like for brow. Yeah, like a highlighter for like the cheekbone, the, the lip. We're going to put it right here. We're going to put it be <laughs> on okay. the top of our face. Like any of the places where the sun will hit, we put highlighter on. Orville sometimes is like, I feel like you're just like glowing in the dark. <laughs> like how much highlighter do you have on? <laughs> so I love Iconic. Highlighter, okay. it is the best. It's like a little dropper situation. I've had, oh, I have theirs. It's so it's good. So good. Is it not amazing? It's I amazing. Put I'm like, I mean, this is. It, you could have like the dullest looking skin that day. Not your skin looks amazing all the time. You look flawless. Oh, but I'm, for me, I feel like sometimes I wake up. I'm like, wow, I need to drink like at least two or three liters of water before I go function today. I'm like, it looked like my life got sucked out of me in my dreams. Like what happened? You know, I'm like a dried out cracker. And so I need water and I put that on and I'm and like, did you just glow like, again? Oh, I just drank two gallons of water. Like, I, it's like listen, instant I am obsessed with things that glow on my face. I am too. And people will say to me sometimes, mean people on Instagram. Oh no, people hate on me they hard. They hate They're on like, it. They'll go, yeah, whatever, you know. Oh, this one is like, you don't look you like don't yourself. Look like what like, are you doing? And I'm like, honey, I'm just living my life. <laughs> I'm just I call, living my life with all my highlights on my cheeks. Yes, I call it Let sliving, it be. You know, like sliving. Par I heard Paris Hilton, she coined this phrase, which... You know, she's wild anyways, but she says, like, slay and living. We are sliving. And so I was like, that's me. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just literally sliving. sliving. I'm sliving my life. And so when people write me and they say mean things, I'm like, I'm just sliving. And they are like, it makes them even more confused because they want you to get upset, I think. And so I'm just like, play along with it. I'm like, 
I'd love to be like have self tanner. I love a good glow. And I'm like, yeah, we may glow in the dark, but we feel good. <laughs> and we wear so much gold jewelry too. I can see where people are like, she is out there, you know, it's just, but you have to be true to yourself and that's what you want. And that's what makes you happy. I'm like, if wearing a giant bird brooch makes you happy, then wear, <laughs> then it. You should wear it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And just live it up. And I feel like from your teachings, from the coaching and everything else, that's poured more into me because I think I was more guarded, like about, you know, like my ADHD because I get hyper and everything else. I think I yep. was like so much more guarded about my clothes and everything else. And learning from you has like helped me like really pour into myself and my children, like really own who you are yep. and be proud of who you are because there is no one else like you. Yes. And you were made for this. Like you were made for this world to uh, cause actually help people and make change and, and give causes and help others. And uh, you just helped me so much. You are so incredible Aww. and such a jewel. I tell Orva all the time, like Edie is such an angel. And I mean mm. that truly that you've helped so many people and even seeing on your coaching when people get on the calls and you pour into them and it just, ch you've changed so many people's lives. So it's just such amazing, amazing Aww. thing. And it's helped us so much. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Well, I love you and so much. And you inspire me in fashion too. <laughs> you inspire yeah. me too. <laughs> well, we'll probably spend another 20 minutes talking about this off air. But I'll tell you, if she, if she lays down any, any things we need, yeah. we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming today. I'm so thank happy you. to have you here. So happy to introduce our community to you they're gonna love you so much too and thank you. thank you for taking the time out i know you're a busy mama and i know you love them babies so thank you for taking the time out and um we really appreciate you coming thank you i appreciate it so much all right see you next time Bye.